Welcome back to the Lakeside Productions YouTube channel, where I'm repairing and converting a 1940 40-foot seaplane tender into a liveaboard. The boat is constructed of double diagonal mahogany and oak ribs. So I started back by removing this rotten section of timber which was secured to the stem. Lower down the fiberglass also has several holes and is cracked quite a bit and you know water could ingress in here. And so I removed this and I cut back to where the fiberglass was sound and it was really bonded well to the wood. And I was surprised to see how intact the wood actually was and it isn't rotten at all. So I applied a polyurethane wood hardener here and this, you know, would just soak into the timber or into the wood and give it that extra kind of durability um, and prevent any more water ingress. I also removed the fair lead is directly under this is the breast hook and it's secured into the breast hook with these four brass screws and then one long bolt and oddly the, the bolt has actually bent. Directly underneath this is the breast hook and this wooden section or this the breast hook of course is wooden also and it suffered from severe water ingress over the years. So I have to come up with a plan next in how to kind of secure it so that I can put back in the fair lead in place because it's quite a opens up quite a can of worms if I was to remove that breast hook and of course the planks the di double diagonal planking I come up to the bow here and then secure to the stem there's a lot of moving parts here so I'm trying to figure out the best option um, but for now taking out the fair lead as it's become loose so once we cut this kind of capping piece of the stem and actually I'm not sure what this piece of timber is called. You know, I know for sure the stem runs vertical and the stem is at the bow of the boat, but you know, what is this piece if it's in sections? You know, you've got this this one kind of short capping piece that's on the exterior of the boat. Uh, what does this refer to as? And does anybody know? If you do know, please comment down in the, com in the comment section below, leave me a comment. Um, I greatly appreciate that. And yes, so once I copy that and, and roughly kind of cut it to shape, got the angles and transcribed the angles, uh, we then, you know, obviously I, I ran the blowtorch over it in order to dry and prep the area and make sure it was, uh, there was no moisture there, it was getting late in the evening. And then we glue it up and secure it in place using epoxy and then brass screws. So I bonded it in place using epoxy, but mixed in microfibers to really make it nice and thick. And that works well for laminating up any, any timber and it's giving it real structural kind of strength in a way. And uh, yeah, we made this piece with Douglas fir because we have a lot of Douglas fir. We got some nice planks of this and we got pretty, pretty cheap too. And then, um, you know, this is also gonna be coated in epoxy and then sanded and painted again to, to get a good bond for the paint. It's going to get a, a primer and then it's going to probably get two coats of primer and then a, a monocoat, probably polyurethane. So it's going to be, it's going to be really protected against the elements. And um, so there's no harm in using a piece of, you know, Douglas fir here and not a harder wood. God damn, this smells like gas. <laughs> Not really yet. 
it's not in the top yet. Okay, just slime it. Okay. After, right? You got your spatula? Yeah, I get it in. The following day I feared and filled any countersunk screw holes that were remaining that I didn't get to and I just used epoxy but with the low density filler here and it gets a nice smooth filler a nice consistency that's very easy to sand down and so I'd, I then sanded that down and then I was ready to put on another primer, another primer coat. And we're using Epifanes for this because this is what my parents used, you know, 30 odd years ago when they were re back, when they bought the boat and they were doing it up and repairing it into a liveaboard back then. And, you know, they used both Epifanes um, uh, for the monocoat and obviously the two part polyurethane as well. So this is the paints we're going with because we know they're durable, they're reliable. I mean, look at how strong that paint has been uh, when I was sanding it down. Um, you know, there was any paint that didn't come off was stuck there, and uh, just that's the you know the test of time, right? So we can't go wrong with using it today. So after this coat of primer, it'll get one more primer, and then it'll be ready for a top coat. The reason I'm doing another primer is just to really kill or to hide that uh, grey that's coming through a little bit, a uh, bit more than I'd like, of course. And um, really, I should have just gone with the primer. Uh, white primer but uh, there's no harm because at least when I'm sanding and well, once I touch up spots with epoxy you know you can't put this paint over epoxy so I, I'm spot sanding it in places that I need to fill countersunk screw holes um, and that's perfect because I can see if I'm going too far if you know that's the good thing about using a, a kind of a, a darker primer for your first coat you know when you've sanded too much or you can see and not go too far into your actual you know steel or wood or whatever the the material is of, of your boat. So this is how it looks the next day with the primer, the white primer over the gray. And it's really starting to come together. It's just fantastic to see it shine in the sunlight. And yeah, it's just great to see it. And you know, I've got visions of the 35 millimeter photographs that my parents have, have taken, you know, 35 years ago when they were doing the work on it. Um, and I just got a great sense of gratitude and, and just fantastic, it's great motivation just to see this boat shine again and and uh, you know give it an extra lease of life. So I sanded down the wheelhouse cabin roof uh, back to its bare timber and which looks to be Douglas fir. has a very very nice grain through it as you can see and it's just a shame to not be able to keep that but it would just be so much upkeep. So I've decided of course to to paint over that and the final finish will be will be paint and that'll give it a real longevity and protection that we need for the Irish climate, of course. So sanded it back to bare timber and then we primed it with epoxy. So we wet on epoxy and rolled it on and then we're ready to sit our fiberglass to lay our fiberglass on there. We're using six ounce woven mat and then I would work that on, you know, wearing gloves, I would, I would work it out, work out any creases and then any ear bubbles that might be there using a squeegee as well. And then my father would then apply more coats of, or we applied another coat of epoxy and we poured that over in, in, in sections. We would do small sections and slowly, slowly work it. We had plenty of time. We were, we were using this epoxy called Gurret Ampro and uh, we we're using it with the slow hardener. So that gave us, gave us a decent amount of time to work with that and just not stressing, not rushing and just doing it in sections, working out the creases and applying more epoxy on it, you know, working it in with the roller so it would get rid of any, you know, white spots, any dry spots, and just work that epoxy through it um, in a nice, even uh, layer. 
So we took a trip to Peter's to help him flip this 19-foot fiberglass boat so he could then replace the keel. And all this wood you're seeing is teak. He did an amazing job. Look at it. Um, it's given this boat a new lease of life and he's replaced it all and made all these seats and gunnels out of teak and it just looks fantastic. So once he replaces the keel and then puts a finish on the teak, that boat will be ready for the water. So that's all for this episode. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed the episode and subscribe if you're new to my channel. I appreciate all this continued support from you guys. It's fantastic. And I do also have a PayPal link in the description below if you feel like supporting my project there. And as always, guys, stay productive and have fun creating. I will see you in the next episode.